I went to the beekeeper to get twelve bees. He counted and gave me thirteen. Sir, you gave me an extra. That's a freebie. Today, I'm going to recap a 2022 action thriller film called Blowback. The film commences with Nick storming into the picture amidst an explosion of energy. Injured and frantic, he weaves his car around the city, his gasps of breath reverberating in the suspenseful silence. Drenched in blood, Nick's determination is tangible even as his vitality fades. Out of nowhere, a police car comes roaring, demanding him to halt. In a bold show of rebellion, Nick skids his vehicle against the sidewalk, slumping into unconsciousness. The police officer cautiously approaches, his eyes bulging at the sight that unfolds. Imprinted on Nick's shoulder is the undeniable sign of a gunshot injury. The scene shifts to a hospital room from a few weeks prior. In the sanitary surroundings, Nick's daughter is weak and unwell. A glimmer of optimism gleams in her eyes, dwindling with each day. Tormented by the recent passing of her mother due to a fatal disease, she vents her anger at her father, wrongly attributing the harsh turn of events to him. However, Nick remains unwavering in his love and dedication. He expresses remorse for the circumstances that have led them to this critical juncture, swearing to battle persistently for her well-being. Moved by his steadfast commitment, his daughter finds comfort in her grief. Nick then quietly departs the room, his heart laden with the world's burden. As he ambles down the hospital hallway, his footsteps echo with resolve, until a nurse halts him. With a grave nod, she hands him the bill, the daunting reminder of the financial obligations that come with his daughter's medical procedures. It's a poignant reflection of the compromises Nick must undertake in his dogged quest to safeguard his cherished one. Nick's challenging financial predicament prevents him from settling everything immediately, yet he commits to do so shortly. He works as a ride hail driver, but his earnings are insufficient to clear his debts, and he must seek an alternate solution. Later, he calls on his friend, Veronica, who operates a fitness center. They retreat to her office, where they contemplate a heist. He tells her that he requires a trustworthy crew, and Veronica pledges her assistance. As he readies to depart, she reveals a watch he had gifted her ages ago. He is tempted to accept it, as it could fetch a decent price, but decides against it, stating it's a present. Just then, a man named Jack walks into Veronica's office for a visit. It seems she is indebted to him for a hundred grand, but clearly she is unable to settle her dues. Therefore, she suggests he participate in the heist and seize a bounty far exceeding a hundred thousand. Nick ruminates on the heist, as a friend rings him up to inquire about his money. The protagonist is swamped with debt, and by this point, the heist seems to be his only recourse. As the night deepens, Nick unveils the blueprint to the remaining members of the crew. He informs them that the bank manager will be away for a span of 20 minutes, which would be their window to execute the heist. He reveals that Ryan, the deputy manager, will assist in cracking the safes, but they need to feign an assault on him to give the impression that he's an innocent victim in the heist. Nick emphasizes that only Jack has rights to vault number 23, while the remaining team can lay claim to the rest. He issues a stern warning against harming anyone, as that would result in a police shootout. Jerry and his companions express their reservations about the heist, mainly because they are uncertain about their portion of the plunder. Veronica voices her concerns about trusting their tech wizard, Xander, but Nick vouches for him, recalling that his father had aided him during his incarceration and he had vowed to return the favor by helping his son. On the day of the heist, everyone is on pins and needles waiting for the bank manager's departure. The moment Xander deactivates the surveillance cameras, the team leaps into action. While Jack and the rest fetch the keys to the vaults, Nick erases the CCTV footages. The crew begins stuffing bags with cash and precious gems. In the midst of this, Xander notices that the law enforcement is en route to the bank, warning them that they've only got four minutes to spare. With time ticking, the team readies to flee, but a robber clad in a white mask, Jerry, lags behind. He accosts the assistant manager, who is in on the heist, and drags him into an office where he shoots him point-blank in the head. He then flees the scene just as the police pull up and climbs into the getaway van. As the team takes off, the bank occupants rise to their feet. 
The SWAT team invades the bank but finds nothing out of the ordinary, dismissing it as a false alarm. Inside the van, the team breaks out in jubilant cheers following the successful heist. Nick then unzips bag number 23 and hands Jack a hard drive containing half a million dollars. Jack distributes $10,000 to everyone, assuring them that they will receive their rightful cut in a few days. They wind up in a secluded location where they switch clothes and disperse in their respective vehicles. However, when Nick inspects his car, he notices a flat tire and in that instant, Jerry shoots him in the shoulder. Nick manages a narrow escape while Jerry snatches his suitcase and abandons his companions. The following morning, Nick rouses and heads to his car. The narrative transitions back to the moment when he blacked out. He regains consciousness in the hospital, explaining to the officers that he was shot while inspecting his car, conveniently leaving out the details of the heist. The story then shifts to Jack and Veronica, who are relishing their newfound wealth in a stunning mansion. Jack receives a call from Jerry. It turns out they had been conspiring to kill Nick all along. However, they remain oblivious to the fact that Nick survived. Jack offers Jerry $50,000 for wiping out Nick, but Jerry demands more. He also wants Nick's share of the spoils. As Jerry possesses the suitcase with the hard drives, Jack finds himself still relying on him. Within the confines of the hospital, Nick seizes fresh clothing and attempts to make his getaway. Just then, Willis, one of the robbers, enters the hospital inquiring about Nick's daughter. As he's not a family member, he's denied access to her. Nick, upon visiting his daughter shortly after, discovers the flowers that Willis had left for her. He kisses her gently, assuring her of his imminent return. Upon his exit from the hospital, Xander shows up to offer him a ride. It appears that Xander has been the sole loyal ally from the start, committed to assisting Nick reclaim his portion of the spoils. Nick requests a drop-off at a specific location, instructing Xander to subsequently return and watch over his daughter. Meanwhile, detectives uncover that Xander had swapped out the authentic surveillance footage with counterfeit versions. Regardless, they manage to glimpse a fragment of the license plate and commence efforts to trace the van. Simultaneously, Nick tracks down the whereabouts of one of the thieves, Willis, and makes his way into his car. As Willis enters, Nick ambushes him with a stun gun, interrogating him about the location of his cut of the loot. However, all Willis knows is that Jack and Veronica are off somewhere living in luxury. Nick stuffs the gift Willis had brought for his daughter into his mouth, warning him to steer clear of her. Unintentionally, Nick kills him in the process and promptly departs the scene. As dusk falls, he pays a visit to an old acquaintance, Byrne, a medical practitioner, seeking treatment for his arm. Despite being a skilled physician, Byrne unfortunately lost his license and is no longer practicing. Meanwhile, the detectives are making headway. They identify the stolen vehicle, but it's devoid of any fingerprints. Moreover, the proprietor of suitcase number 23 sues the bank, leveraging the insurance on the item. Nick shows up at a law firm, asserting that he possesses information regarding one of their client's stolen briefcase. He converses with an attorney named Cameron, who initially declines to disclose his client's identity. Eventually, he hands Nick a number to call and counsels him to tread lightly. Amidst this, detectives descend on the law firm, compelling Nick to conceal himself. They engage in a conversation with Cameron and learn that $2 million worth of cryptocurrency was stolen. Nick dials the number provided by Cameron and is redirected to a lamp store. Before long, the detectives discover his escape from the hospital, realizing something is amiss as a typical individual wouldn't resort to such drastic measures. At the store, Nick seeks an audience with the owner of the suitcase, Valenti, but his men obstruct him. Claiming knowledge about the theft of Valenti's suitcase, Valenti finally makes an appearance. Nick confesses his involvement in the theft and vows to return the stolen suitcase. In this manner, Valenti stands to gain both the insurance payout as well as the suitcase. Nick, in exchange, demands his cut from the heist amounting to $500,000, which he intends to utilize for his daughter's medical expenses. Valenti consents and permits him to leave. Simultaneously, detectives persist with their investigations, compiling data on all theft-related incidents that occurred in the state of Nevada over the preceding half a year. 
The narrative shifts back to Jack, who is informed about Willis's demise by a friend. Jack instructs this friend to pilfer the briefcase from Jerry and go into hiding as the suspicions will naturally gravitate towards him. Jack and Veronica hold no suspicions against Nick, believing that Willis was done in by his own accomplices, and hence they side with him. Nick shares the ride with Valenti's chauffeur and places a call to Xander to inquire about his daughter's condition. Following this, he pays her a visit in the hospital where Veronica too turns up. His daughter is whisked away for diagnostic tests. Veronica asserts her innocence, claiming ignorance about Jack's intentions to assassinate Nick. Upon being questioned about the briefcase's location by Nick, she jots down the address and takes her leave. The detectives come across news of Willis's death and manage to link Jerry to him. They also stumble upon information about Jerry's girlfriend, Monique, and resolve to pay her a visit. Concurrently, Nick arrives at the address provided by Veronica, which turns out to be Jerry's residence. They sneak in through the back entrance, only to encounter Jerry's mother. Nick and the henchmen score the premises for the briefcase, but are interrupted by the arrival of a friend of Jerry's. On spotting Nick, he attempts to make a run for it, but is swiftly apprehended. Nick resorts to beating him and declares that they intend to take him somewhere for interrogation. In the meantime, the detectives drop by Monique's place and uncover that Jerry had been there a few days ago. Furthermore, she discloses that Jerry's friend occasionally crashes at his mother's house. Shifting back to Nick, he binds the thief to a chair, commencing his brutal interrogation. Aware that he must rendezvous with Jack to deliver the briefcase, he demands the address. Despite initial resistance, the henchman begins his course of tactics. Despite the relentless torture, the thief adamantly denies any knowledge. As a result, the henchman escalates the intensity of the torture with electric shocks, finally breaking the thief into revealing the planned meet-up location with Jack the next night. Veronica, I'm returning home, confronts Jack with wrath for his attempt on Nick's life. It turns out she had no part to play in betraying Nick. Jack, driven by jealousy and resentment towards Nick, physically abuses Veronica and vows to kill Nick soon. As this unfolds, the detectives storm into Jerry's house, and upon spotting him, they open fire. Jerry manages to evade them, and the detectives immediately call for backup. In the midst of all this, Jack is packing a bag full of money when he gets a call from Jerry, who is waiting for him with the briefcase. Shortly after, a black car pulls up, collects Jerry, and speeds away. The police carry out an investigation at Jerry's residence, unearthing numerous phone numbers and other potential leads. Jerry reaches the designated location with the briefcase, just as he spots Jack arriving by car. He draws a weapon and starts moving stealthily towards him. Simultaneously, the police manage to track Jerry's mobile and set their course towards the meeting point. Jack and Veronica make their way into the building for the arranged meet-up with Jerry, only to stumble upon the lifeless body of his friend. Jerry jumps to the conclusion that Jack is responsible for the death, triggering a violent shootout. Jerry, gun in hand, edges closer but is fatally shot by Jack. Shortly after, Nick makes his entrance and lands a bullet in Jack's abdomen. In a fit of rage, Jack turns his gun on Veronica, compelling Nick to return fire at him. Soon after, the henchman of Valenti turns up and claims the briefcase. He hands over a bag containing $500,000 to Nick and promptly exits the scene. Nick embraces Veronica and departs with Sander just before the arrival of law enforcement. Subsequently, Valenti is granted a payout of $2 million from the insurance company and proceeds to sell off the cryptocurrency to a client. In the final sequence, we witness Nick and his daughter setting off blissfully on holiday. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.